Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you what exactly is a bindable object in Swift UI. So consider a very simple example that you have some sort of a user settings class. And whenever you change the score property of the user settings class, you need to refresh the interface. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a user settings class. So let's go ahead and add a new Swift file and add a user settings. Now, one of the things that you might be thinking that, hold on, why can't I just use state and use that? Well, you still can use state if you want to. The problem is that the state is mainly for the user interface elements. So the state of the UI, the user interface, the components of views. In this case, the state of the view is not really changing the state of the custom class is changing. We are incrementing the score, which is a property of user settings. So now let's go ahead and create our user settings class, user settings. And I'm going to go ahead and create a property called score, which will be an integer property. Now, if I want to get a notification, meaning some sort of a subscription that whenever the score changes, I can update my UI, I can go ahead and inherit from a bindable object. For this, I need to also go ahead and use import Swift UI. And I will also use Combine Framework, which is a reactive framework part of the iOS 13. Now, one of the things you will see over here is that if you are using a bindable object over here, which is a protocol, the only requirement for that protocol is that you implement the did change function or the did change publisher. So did change equals to a pass through subject, which means that I'm not gonna be passing in anything and this will never really fail. Now this is a subject that we have created. And if I go ahead and call this subject did.send, anytime the score changes, other people who are subscribed to this subject are going to get notification. So I can go ahead and say over here did set and did change dot send and send nothing because it doesn't really send anything, it's a void. Let's go ahead and build this. So now we have used a bindable object to create our user settings. This means anytime this code is going to get changed. I'm going to fire did change dot send. Now, any other person who is subscribed to these changes will get a notification and then they can update the UI. So I can go over here into my content view. You can see right now the content view is not really using anything, but I can use my user settings if I want to. var settings equals to user settings. But if I want to create the object and also get a notification, I have to mark this with object binding. This means that this is a bindable object, which we have declared over here, bindable object. And anytime a property score gets changed, we will get a notification and the body is rendered again. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, I need some sort of a button so go ahead inside of vStack. I will create a text that will display the value, the updated value of the score. And I will simply create a button that will increment the score. Now I'm using Xcode 11 beta 3. So I have a new function over here, which I can simply pass in the title of the button. So let's say increment score. And the action will be when you click a button. So what I want to do is I want to update the score. So self.settings.score plus equals to one, simply updating the score. Now, whenever the score gets updated, if I go back to my user settings, you can see that whenever the score is updated, did send is going to get invoked, which is going to fire the change which in turn is going to allow our body to be get rendered again, because this settings object is marked with object binding. And that's the whole point of using bindable objects. If you have your custom data, 
and you change the data, maybe you're adding a new record or a new item, and you want your view to be in sync with the data to refresh, then you can use that. Now let's go ahead and change this. And I'm gonna simply go ahead and display over here, settings.score. You don't really need to put self over here, but I'm just gonna put it right here. Okay, let's go ahead and build that. And now let's go ahead and try it out. So I'm gonna go into a little bit zoom in maybe and go into the live mode. Once it is in live mode, we can actually click on the increment score. Increment score is gonna change the score. It will gonna add one to the score as soon as we add one to the score, which is on line number 20. The body gets rendered again and we show the updated score in the settings.score as a text. So let's go ahead and make it run. Here we go. And you can see that the score is getting updated. So this is great. And this can also be used if you are fetching something from a, an API, like some sort of a JSON service, you can fetch and then you can fire settings.send and then your interface or the view gets a notification, the subscription, and it can update itself. So there we go. So this is a whole concept behind bindable objects. Hope you like it. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my YouTube channel, then the best way would be to go to Udemy and check out my latest course, which is Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. Now, this is a five and a half hour course, and I'm still working on some of the other contents, which will take you from knowing nothing about the Swift UI and then building and even using MVVM design pattern to load stuff, load JSON from a web API and then display it. So this is a very, very great course for learning about Surf UI. I already have 324 students enrolled. You can see that 4.8 rating. And, you know, I will be keep on adding different content as I learn some other stuff like gestures is already there. Property wrappers is an amazing feature of the Swift language. And I've added property wrappers also in the course. All right. The link to this course, along with the coupon that will give you the best deal, is already part of the YouTube description, along with some other courses if you're interested. So simply click on the link and it will take you to the Udemy page with the deal already applied. So I would really, really, really appreciate if you actually use the link that I have provided, because if you use the link, then I get to keep the 90% of the revenue. If you don't use the link, I get to keep only 10% and in the end, you get the best deal if you use the link. So check out this course. The link is right there in the YouTube description. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please let me know.